This is the Minister's Crucible. I'm Fred Rochester. Thanks for listening. Uh, There's a big debate, not that big a debate, but a debate about whether a Christian should celebrate Valentine's Day or not. Well, you be the judge and you decide whether or not you should do so. But uh, reading from an article uh, from uh, Wikipedia, uh, we find out that uh, Valentine was an actual person. Now, whether or not uh, this individual is properly defined and the background of uh, where this individual uh, came from, nonetheless, uh, he was buried in uh, February of uh, February 14th. And that's the uh, celebrated day. Today, obviously, is February 14th. But let's get into the story. Uh, Valentine's Day, also called St. Valentine's Day, or the Feast of St. Valentine, is celebrated annually on February 14th. It originated as a Christian feast day. Now, when you see Christian feast day, um, it was probably either uh, during when Catholicism was just about getting its feet uh, uh, under its feet, or perhaps during the time in which it started and uh, really carried on into false doctrine. But nonetheless, it started out as a Christian feast day, honoring a martyr named Valentine. Through later folk traditions, it has become a significant cultural and commercial celebration of romance and love and in uh, many regions and, and participated in in many regions. Few people study or know who this re- this person really is. And obviously there is there isn't that much information that is out there that would uh, give us uh, clues as to who this person was. But nonetheless, he did exist. Now, the Pope banned him or an emperor banned him from uh, performing marriages for Christians. He was beheaded by the uh, by these individuals and then was made a saint by the Catholics. So uh, that's part of the background. And we still don't know conclusively because there's a a variety of stories that uh, uh, speaks of his martyrdom. But nonetheless, he was killed and he was buried uh, in February 15th. But here's another part of the story. Officially recognized by the Roman Catholic Church, St. Valentine is known to be a real person who died around A.D. 270. However, his true identity was questioned as early as A.D. 496 by Pope Galassius, or Galassius, uh, spelled G-A-L-A-S-I-U-S, the first, who referred to the martyr and his acts as being known only to God. So there's the question. One account from the 1400s describes Valentine as a temple priest who was beheaded near Rome by the emperor, Emperor Claudius, or Claudius, rather, the second, for helping Christian couples wed. February 14th is celebrated as St. Valentine's Day in various Christian denominations. It has, for example, the rank of commemoration in the calendar of saints in the Anglican Communion. The feast day of St. Valentine is given in the calendar of saints of the Lutheran Church. In the 1969 version of the Roman Catholic calendar of saints, the feast day of St. Valentine on February 14th was removed from the general Roman calendar and relegated to particular local or even national calendars for the following reason. Though, and I quote from Wikipedia, of course, though the memorial of St. Valentine is ancient, It is left to particular calendars since apart from his name, nothing is known of St. Valentine except that he was buried on the Via Flaminia on February 14th. Hope I pronounced that right. If not, if I butchered it, please forgive me. But let's cut right to the chase. It's about money, isn't it? It is estimated that even in this downturn economy in the United States, high interest rates 
and an increase in the cost of groceries, Americans will spend $21.5 billion, billion as in B, dollars on candy, cards, diamonds, and other expensive gifts on their wives, boyfriends, and girlfriends. Uh, But we have a greater love than this, and this love can be celebrated each and every single day. God demonstrated his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's what the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 5. In the book of John chapter 3 and verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You see, the true love is when one lays down their lives for their friends. And the Lord Jesus Christ laid down his life for us so that way he can pay the penalty of sin and that we, based on repentance from dead works and placing our faith towards God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, based on what he did on the cross, on the cross, we can now have eternal life. And this is the thing that is of grave importance. And, and this is something that we should never, ever uh, shy away from, especially those of us that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. So if you're looking for love, you can look for love in the flesh. You can look for love in gifts. But the greatest gift of all is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans, chapter six and verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We have salvation as a gift from God. The book of Ephesians chapter two and verse eight, beginning there, says that for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And so grace is a gift given to us from God. And it was expressed through the death, burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that way we can have eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, for many people, there will be nothing wrong with giving gifts and and candy and things of that nature to your your wife, your husband, your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Don't give uh, unmarried couple gifts the gift of sex because the gift of sex is within the confines of holy matrimony. Uh, don't fornicate and commit adultery. That's not a gift. That is sin, sin against God. But in terms of the husband and the wife or boyfriend and girlfriend before you're married and you don't give up your virginity, you know, as a gift, uh, I, I see nothing wrong with doing that on, on a regular basis. Now, whether you do it on February 14th or any other day of the year, that's completely up to you. Uh, and in fact, you probably shouldn't wait till just just that one particular day to lavish uh, a special gift. You should do it as a spontaneous act any day of the week. Now, if you want to look at it from a pagan perspective uh, and, and consider that the, the worship of uh, St. Valentine is is of a pagan origin, that's completely up to you. You can decide for yourself whether you want to participate in it or not. I myself don't participate in it because I just don't believe in uh, celebrating my love for my wife on just one particular day. My wife is celebrated and loved each and every day. And more so and more so than this, the Lord loves us because he gave us his greatest gift. And that is that is his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to save us from sin and to save us from the wrath of God that is to come. So go ahead and enjoy the day. Go ahead and enjoy any other day that you so choose. Just learn that when you're giving a gift, it's it's out of the heart, but the greatest gift of all is God giving us his only begotten son that we may believe on him and not perish and have everlasting life. You've been listening to The Minister's Crucible. I'm Fred Rochester. Thanks for listening.